Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. My, ni my name is Esther, and I'm so glad to be here with you for another fantastic, fantastic live session that we have lined up for you today. Uh, we have a great session today. We have with us Dick Eastman, and he'll be talking about documenting source citations, a very, very important topic that we know uh, we get questions about all the time. And before I get to today's session, I just want to let you know about a few things we have going on here at My Heritage. Uh, the first thing is that we have begun our pre-holiday DNA sale today at My Heritage, and our DNA kits are being sold now for fantastic, fantastic sale prices. For those of you that want to get an early start on your holiday ship, holiday shopping. So uh, we we know that it's definitely worthwhile to test all your family members, even if you've already taken a DNA test, uh, you could always use a few more for all those relatives out there, try and get some more information. So we encourage you to take advantage of this fantastic sale and we'll put a link to it in our comments section. So please do take a look at that. It's a fantastic bargain and we hope that you take advantage of that sale going on. Um, besides for that, uh, we've been running these online Facebook Lives and sessions for the past few months for all of you that are at home, maybe more time at home lately due to everything going on. And uh, our users have found them very, very useful. But we'd like to see you, all of you that are at home watching our sessions. We'd really like to like to see how you're enjoying the sessions. So today, we're going to be running a short competition, which is that uh, anyone that takes a photo of themselves sitting and watching today's session, uh, you know, whether it be um, a computer at your computer at, at your desk or on a couch, uh, maybe sitting and uh, enjoying this session, please send in a picture and you can send that into stories at myheritage.com. And we will be rewarding one of those uh, one of those entries at the end of today's session. We'll be rewarding a My Heritage Complete Plan to somebody that sends in a photo to us. So that is to the email address stories at myheritage.com throughout today's session. So while today's session is going on, if you could just send that in, uh, we'd like to see how you're enjoying today's show. And uh, one lucky winner will win a My Heritage Complete Plan, and that is the best plan that My Heritage has to offer with free access to all of our 12.6 billion historical records, free access to the My Heritage Photo Tools, that's My Heritage in Color, and the My Heritage Photo Enhancer. So. Really, really a fantastic, fantastic prize. And uh, we know that everyone that has won them at previous sessions has just been so, so thrilled. So uh, we really hope that it's you, <laughs> each and every one of you. Um, but one lucky winner, as we said, will win a My Heritage Complete Plan. So take a picture of yourself watching today's session. Get, get a, you know, if you have a family member at home with you, call them over, have them take a quick shot of you sitting and enjoying today's session. Uh, and we'd love to see that. So we hope to hear from all of you soon and we'll put the details also in the comments section today so uh, as you know everything that we talk about uh, we typically put in the comments section so whether that is today's dna sale or the um competition that i just mentioned we'll write about that in the comments so you get all the details. Uh, today's session, as well as all of our Facebook Lives, are recorded, and you can go back and watch them again at your leisure. So that is on the My Heritage Facebook page, facebook.com slash myheritage, under the video section, and you'll find them all there. We hope that you enjoy them. So I'd like to introduce today's speaker. With us, we have a uh, one of the most recognized names in the genealogy world, and a great, great friend of My Heritage. Um, we have with us Dick Eastman, uh, just so, so knowledgeable on so many genealogy topics, and we're so, so glad to have him with us. Hi, Dick. How are you? I'm doing great, Esther, and uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. We are always so happy to have you with us. Well, it's uh, it's always fun to be here. I will, I will start off by saying, though, that it's uh, I was really calm, cool, and collected about 10 minutes ago, but then I started looking at all the people joining and where are you from, and I started getting nervous. I didn't realize we were going to have a crowd quite this large, so <clears throat> excuse me. 
if I <laughs> stumble a little bit. Uh, everybody's talking where they're from. I'll point out that I am in Orlando, Florida, USA. And I don't know exactly what town you you are in, Esther, but I know you're in or near uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. Exactly. So uh, this, this makes us, I'm sure, uh, the most international group I've ever addressed at one time. And I'm really <laughs> delighted. And I, I'm going to blame Esther for this. She suggested I bring my trademark, which I'm wearing on my head right now. Uh, I don't normally wear this around the house, but hey, today's a special day, so why not? I've been wearing it for about an hour or so. As I said, I said that that's how everyone in the genealogy world uh, uh, recognizes you. So it, it's your trademark. <laughs> yeah, it was never intended that way, but it sort of worked out. And uh, actually, this hat came from New Zealand. I brought it back from one of my trips, and uh, I kind of liked it. And I wear it, and here it is. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And we're so, so excited to learn more about this. I know that um, most genealogists say that it, it's not a true fact unless it has a proper source and citation. And, uh, and I know that a lot, of, a lot of people starting out their journey want to know more about how to, how to document that. So it's really a very important subject. Okay. Shall we begin? Sure. Let me bring up your slides. All righty. Okay, I, I can see it. So there I see you go. It again, right. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the real question is why should you bother to document your sources? And I think Esther just said it's not a, a true fact until you've got it documented. And uh, I, I can tell you about, in fact, I will tell you in a moment about my experiences without source citations, uh, which was a, a learning session for me and I will share it with everyone else. I will apologize a little bit in advance. This is not exactly the most exciting topic to ever talk about, uh, but it is also, in my opinion, one of the most important things to talk about uh, for anybody who is new or fairly new to genealogy. And it's one that I like to hammer at, and when I get a chance, to, when I find people who, uh, who are not yet documenting their source citations, I probably stand there for about the next half hour and talk to them about why they should be. So let's talk a little bit about why you should uh, document your uh, source citations. And, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Esther, I don't know if we should be punching a uh, button of some sort, but all of a sudden, yeah, I went to advance to my next slide and it, it's not advancing. Yeah, we still see the um, the cover page as well. Um, do you want to try maybe removing the share screen and, and sharing again? Maybe that will work. Removing the share screen. Uh, let's try right. Hmm, that's interesting. I know how to remove it blunt force, but I, okay. That just Here. went away. Now let's see if I can share it again. No problem. And while, while you're on break, I said, I'll say that we, we got a comment from Lori and she said she loves the hat. So, so I'm, not the only, I'm not the only one. <laughs> All right. Let's so see let's see. We're, here. we're okay. just working on sharing, um, sharing the presentation again. Sorry, folks. We should have that up in. Oh, here. Let me see. I think that's. Let's try I'm this. seeing it right now. I'm not sure what you are seeing. There we go. We see why document sources. Okay, let me back up. Yeah, man, it seems to be working here. I assure you, I only tested this about a thousand times in the past week or so, and it worked perfectly every time. So there's uh, Murphy who says something about uh, things that can go wrong, and it seems to apply in this case. So with that, let's get started. Uh, as, as you can just read on the screen, I hope, uh, family group sheets, GenCom files, and any other form of information that's used for genealogy purposes should be formally documented as formal, fully documented as formal manuscripts. Now, did you ever ask yourself, where did I find that information? And I'm gonna tell you, when I started in genealogy, I lived in a little small town up in Northern Vermont, and I didn't know anybody else who even was interested in genealogy. And I went out on my own and started doing things and looking up information. And uh, I was very fortunate, I lived pretty close to the area where the majority of my uh, ancestors had lived. My family never moved very much. 
Uh, we, we stayed pretty much in that area until I came along and I moved all over the place since then. But anyway, um, I did things without any advice. I didn't have anybody looking over my shoulder telling me what to do. And looking back at it right now, I consider that to be a terrible oversight. Uh, and I went out and I found information about my ancestors. I went to various libraries and I went to a couple of town clerks and I certainly talked with a lot of my uh, relatives. And I wrote down most everything I was told. And I was very proud of it. Well, time went by and you know, two years, three years later, I was told something or read something else and uh, found out that it uh, contradicted the information I had written down a couple of years earlier. So what was my first question? And you see, you're reading it on your screen right now. Where did I find that information? And I'm going to tell you, I'm still suffering with that problem to some degree today. I've gotten a lot better at documentation, but every once in a while I find a, a note in my database, something that I recorded <clears throat> more years ago than I care to tell you. Uh, and I end up asking myself that same question again. I wish I had known to start at the beginning. Here's the, the real best answer, though. The best reason for documenting you found information is as a note to yourself for future reference. I'm going to talk a little bit about making notes for other people, too. But in my mind, the primary purpose is to make a note to yourself first. And then a secondary purpose is for making notes to other people to, to use. Even those who have no intention of submitting to a work to a journal or publishing a book or anything else formal, you're someday going to have to look it up for yourself, or you're going to share information with one of your cousins, maybe a distant relative, uh, yeah, maybe one of your children, if that's appropriate, whatever. So let's talk about why you want to do this. And the best uh, reference I can think of is real estate agents. When you talk to them, they'll tell you that there's only three things that are important in realty. That is location, location, and location. Well, genealogy has a somewhat similar thing. We don't talk much about location, but we only have one major thing that is important to all of us. That's documentation, documentation, and yeah, you guessed it, documentation. In fact, family group sheets, GenCom files, and anything else that's used to share genealogy information should be as fully documented as a formal manuscript. Even if it's only for your own purposes, your own notes that you want to refer to in the future, even those who have no intention of ever submitting their work to a journal or of publishing a book will want to still know where the information came from, to tell yourself, to tell your cousin, whomever. It's essential that whatever software you use, I'm not going to assume that you use software, uh, but whatever software you use should uh, have the capability of recording source citations. And I'll insert a plug here for MyHeritage. It does a very good job at that. But even if you don't use software, even if you keep your genealogy on paper, you've got to be keep it, uh, in mind that everything should be uh, sourced. Now, experienced genealogists will agree that accurately recording the full citation data from a source at the first time is absolutely essential. Yeah, you probably can vividly remember those statements, those so-called facts. You should put the word facts in quote marks. You can probably remember them for the rest of the day. You'll probably remember them tomorrow, maybe next week. But although it's, for me, I think it would be doubtful if I could remember it next week. Or maybe I could even not even remember it at breakfast time tomorrow. But whatever the, your, uh, however memor good your memory is, it still needs to be recorded. Experienced genealogists will tell you that accurately recording the full citation data the first time is really essential. Now, or is it uh, sufficient to declare this? I wouldn't have written it down if it weren't true. I have actually heard people say that. Don't believe it. Now, so whether the source is a probate court record or a yellow newspaper clipping, your grandfather's diary, or a conversation with your father, always cite your sources. Whether you take notes on a computer, whether you handwrite them, whether you make copies on a copier, or whether you dictate them into a tape recorder. Practicality, credibility, and ethics require more careful source citations. 
Most of us also admit that we've occasionally neglected to do that and have had to backtrack time and effort we'd rather spend seeking new information. Where would you select to spend your time and your efforts? Refine, recording old information that you recorded before, but perhaps inaccurately, or perhaps with no source citation, or would you rather spend your time looking for new information? I'll leave it to you to make that decision. The best time to make a source citation is when the original source is still in your hands or on your computer screen. Now, profile pages are designed to give you an overview of the life of a person. And I'm talking about profile pages as they're referred to in myheritage.com. And it make it possible to view, add, or edit information with ease. So let's take a moment to walk through some of the uh, new features that were added a little while ago to uh, myheritage.com's profiles. Uh, here's something from my database. And you, it's all small font. I would jump in immediately and, and recognize uh, a woman right about in the middle, Nina Nelson Eastman Dow. That's my grandmother. And I remember her well. She passed away when I was still a fairly young child. but. Uh, I was fortunate enough to spend a lot of time with her in my uh, formative years, and uh, I remember her fondly. So um, let's look into the details of how to cite sources. Let's look a brief look at her genealogy. Now, this does is going to use my grandmother as an example, but I picked her simply because, one, I have fond memories of her, and two, because I think she's an ex excellent example. But you could substitute anybody any of your ancestors, relatives, or even the neighbor up the street, if you're tracking that. The genealogy research process involves finding our ancestors by collecting sources that, when combined with our own knowledge, skills, and intuition, result in evidence from which we can draw conclusions. The most important evidence are the parent-to-child links. This lady was the daughter of these two people, or this young man was a son of somebody. That's the most important thing. However, that's not the only conclusions that you should be recording. And you absolutely should be recording where you got that information. In the case of my grandmother, I have a pretty simple uh, solution or a citation. That's what my grandmother told me when I was at her knee as a, as a young child. And I'm fortunate enough to have remembered most all of that. But it's something I have to record because my, fam my memory may fade or maybe somebody else is going to be reading this in the future, maybe some years after I have passed away. So let's zoom in a little bit. Now you'll see that same woman in the upper right corner, Nina or Nina Nelson Dow was her maiden name. And she married a Mr. Eastman. Wilbur Holt Eastman, who's shown right beside her. Uh, and we're beginning to look at a record of a person. Now, this is not a source citation yet. I'll get to that shortly. A citation is a link that connects a source to our conclusion. So genealogy is not a creative art. It's, it's where, we, where we let our imaginations run wild. I admit my imagination has run wild once in a while, but I tend to record true facts, source citations. Why can we do that when we're trying to understand why an ancestor did something, but not when we're recording something that was done? Now, citations, back in the good old days, you know, that means before computers, were usually embedded in parentheses within the text, such as footnotes or endnotes and so on. And there are lots of sources on the web that will uh, tell you how and where to record such things. And I'm going to give you one reference near the end of this uh, presentation. However, for the rest of the presentation, I'm going to refer primarily to computer use, whether you're doing it online on a uh, in powerful website like MyHeritage or whether you're doing it in a genealogy program in your own computer, uh, such as uh, Family Tree Maker or Roots Magic or uh, things of that sort. Or if you're just writing it down as freeform text in a word processor, uh, that's the sort of things that I will be uh, referring to. Sources can be listed as a bibliography section, uh, which do not contain locators. But the normal method in 
using computers is uh, to give a little bit more information, such as where you found that. Citations are links between a recorded event and one of the sources that are used to support our recorded conclusions about that event. Take a birth record. Yeah, that's a source citation. A recorded event, the event of a birth, and one of the sources used to support our recorded conclusions. That is the birth record, where we found it, where it is stored, and things of that sort. To be effective, citations really must be complete and consistent. While you don't have to use one of the accepted forms for citations, you don't even have to do it the way I'm going to show you today. This is your own style is likely to communicate a lack of discipline or a lack of understanding. The recommended ways were not created overnight. They're a result of experience of thousands and thousands of genealogists over a period of years. And to ignore the recommended ways is perhaps... Uh, I, want, I don't want to say ignorance, but it's, it's ignoring a tool that could benefit you greatly. Some of the more respected styles are listed in the resources at the end of this presentation. Now, I'm not going to say you have to copy this style. I think it would be a good idea if you did, but it's not required. Uh, but there are books uh, and uh, websites that talk about how to record citations. Uh, if you want books that talk about Citations in the genealogy world, there's only two or three or four of them that I would recommend. Uh, if you want to go for all sorts of other things, you might look at the Chicago Manual Style, Modern Language Associate Style Guides, and, and more. The profile features on MyHeritage enable documentation of detailed bibliographic uh, or biographical information of each family member and provide an illustration of their most important life events on a map. Now, let's go back and look at some of the notes for this same lady. This is my, again, it's my grandmother. And I'm taking a screenshot from myheritage.com. And I think this is a, a fabulous method that MyHeritage has of recording information. They've got capability of recording almost every fact that you care to record in a person's life. And this was actually a long, long uh, column of information because I have recorded a lot of facts about her. And this is just the top of it, that column. And you see a little bit of biography on her. And then there is a fact, her birth, location, the date. And in this case, a little bit of a reference as to where I found the uh, information down at the bottom of that. Now, let's go a little bit further. This is just scrolling down that long column of information. Uh, I picked the one at the top. That's my father, born in 1908. And as I listed there, I also thought it was kind of unique. He was born on the eighth day of the eighth month of the eighth year of the century. So that's one thing I can always remember about him. Uh, and then go down. It was the next child. It was my aunt and then uh, this, my uncle and so on. Uh, and in 1921 was the birth of their last uh, child. And then the uh, following year, the marriage of uh, their oldest daughter, et cetera, et cetera. But let me back up just for a second. Is the, are these source citations? I would say no. These are my statements of facts, things that I believe to be true. But in this particular screen, I did not say where I found that record. Now, with one exception on the uh, uh, one showing here in the 1908, the birth of my father. Uh, I said that uh, that fact was listed in the family Bible. So that's a little bit of a source citation, but in my mind is not the best one. So let's go down into something else. This, again, is the profile from my heritage showing my grandmother's uh, information. And you'll see first a middle name, maiden name, married name, place of birth, date of birth, death date, cause of death, and a little bit about my grandfather. Uh, at least as uh, relates to her. They were married. That's kind of an important fact. Uh, but again, it isn't really a source citation. It is simply my statement of facts. But if you look down in the bottom left corner, there's a gray arrow there, and it says, edit more, bio, more facts. So if I, uh, I'm doing this from a, a canned screen uh, presentation, I can't click on that live. 
But if I clicked on OK over the bottom right, uh, you would go into what I would now call a uh, source citation. And in fact, it says that right up near the top, right below her name, and a little bit to the right of her name. My source is the Eastman website now, on my heritage. The citation text, this is my real source citation. Information was copied from the Eastman Family Bible in the possession of Kelly Eastman Raffaelli, that's my daughter, by the way, in Cape Elizabeth, Maine. The page URL are where, where this uh, reference is on my heritage. My confidence, well, I, they only gave me one choice, so I, I put it down as direct and primary evidence because that information came out of the Family Bible, and we tend to know that Family Bibles are usually accurate. They don't have to always be accurate, but my experience is they are most of the time. Uh, I could have put in more uh, facts in there too, besides that confidence, but that is the one that I felt was the most appropriate for somebody reading this in the future. I could have said, I heard this from my grandmother. I mean, that's, that's certainly primary source citation. But at the date that I uh, recorded this in the Family Bible, and it gives the exact date, August 8th of 2004. And look below that, I could have added another source citation. I didn't, but I could have. I could manage my sources. And then there's an explanation. If you forget everything I tell you today, you can click on what are source citations. And there's a rather good uh, description on my heritage. Oh, here's another. I consider this to be a source citation. This, by the way, is my grandmother. Uh, on the left, she is about three years old. On the right, she is somewhere around 20 years old, but we know it was before she was married. And I took advantage of a little option on my heritage to have the uh, computer automatically colorize them. These pictures, when I obtained them originally, were both in black and white. And in fact, she was born in 1875, so that's the photo on the left was probably made around 1878. Uh, they didn't happen to have color photography back in 1878. And uh, I'm not too sure about 1895, uh, the picture on the right. Uh, if they had it, it was quite rare at that time. I'm not even sure they had it. Uh, but that is, in my mind, a source citation, particularly if you couple that with a written citation, which I did. I wrote it out. I don't think I have it here. Uh, this is a fan chart of her ancestry as I know it. You notice I have a few blanks left to fill in. Uh, is this a source citation? No, not in my opinion. These are statements of facts, at least what I believe to be facts, but they are not source citations. So what is a source citation? If you understand the items that go into a citation record, it's a matter of arranging those items in a logical manner. When you have created a satisfactory source note, stand back and ask yourself questions. Does this tell my family or a future reader how and where to find the same source? Well, my first one that I showed you said that that information came from the family Bible. So if you're somebody reading this 10 years or 50 years or 100 years from now, your, your challenge is to find where the family Bible resides at that time. If I'd found that information in the book, I would have presented, well, I did in the Bible. I guess that qualifies as a book. But let's say I found it in a book that's the Eastman family of North America or something. I would have put that title in there. Uh, is a citation clear enough so that you can understand the merit of the source being cited? I believe it is. I wrote down it was in the family Bible. And if you're an experienced genealogist, you know that is generally accurate. You should be able to answer those questions without any hesitation. You could collaborate from a genealogy friend in drafting basic citations or ask a respected professional to critique your style. And because I like to always be the source of uh, my statements, I gave at the very bottom of this a source citation that above is exact word copy and paste from familysearch.org, which is a pretty good reference, I think. Now, consistency in style is almost as important as being accurate with titles, series, microfilm numbers, and things like that. You don't want to write a source citation one way 
and then have another short citation in, of uh, another relative that just says, uh, I think this is true. Yeah, that, that would be a very poor way of doing it. Once you figure out how you want to do your source citations, you should try to follow more or less the same manner every time. Some people or archival institutions will tell you to do it this way or that way, and I don't see anything wrong with that, but I also don't see anything wrong with doing your own manner as long as it makes sense to other people. Uh, if you take a source citation that says, uh, source number 38, in my mind, that's not a very good source citation. Each genealogy software has a built-in style. Some of it's pretty good. I mentioned my heritage is pretty good. Some of the others are rather good. But different sources, different media format, if you're looking at old photographs or looking at microfilm, they have different uh, arrangements. And again, this came from that same source citation, familysearch.org. Here is an example of a source citation. Actually, here are two examples of the same source citation. They uh, vary a little bit in their format, but it's the same information. The, the first one came from the Henry Foster household in the 1871 census of Canada, province of Ontario, Snow County, Winter Township, District 77, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it was found at Microfilm C9912, Library and Archives Canada uh, in Ottawa. Hopefully all the microfilm copies of C9912 would be identical. I just happened to get the one in Ottawa. Uh, right below it is essentially the same information, slightly different format. And it came from a microfilm different number. And I found this at the Family History Library in Salt Lake City, Utah. You can see these are pretty much complete uh, source citations. It not only gives the name of where I found it, uh, the document, in this case, in the second case, it was a microfilm. Actually, both were microfilms. Uh, it tells what it's a microfilm of, and it also gives the location of where I found it. If it was me, I probably would have done it this way. Henry Foster Household, 1871 Census, Ontario, where it is, line 18, because I know that future people are not necessarily going to be going to Ottawa or going to Salt Lake City. They're going to find the same microfilm or the computerized digital images of the same microfilm in various locations. To me, the important thing is the microfilm. Here's a source citation for a vital record. That, the one you just looked at was, in fact, uh, for a uh, census record. Here's one from a vital record example. This was uh, a birth registration. But again, you see the same information. Uh, the title of the microfilm, even the uh, film number, uh, microfilm number real 14, and found it in Archives of Ontario in Toronto. And down below, a slightly abbreviated, but I still think totally sufficient uh, source citation. When I say I think it's totally adequate, uh, there are people who will disagree with me. There are people who have their own method, and maybe they prefer to uh, copy something, uh, somebody's source citation mechanism out of a book. Nothing wrong with that. Everybody has their own method. If you found it in a book, what would you ever uh, use that as a source citation? And this one here, Brenda Dougal Merriman, United Empire Light Loyalists uh, in Upper Canada. And it's published by Global Heritage Press. This is not microfilm. This is a book. And this tells uh, the name of the book, when it was published, and the fact that it was on page 95. Looking at this right now, I probably would say page 95. But I think most people can figure it out. Here's a, an article. It could be written in a, a book. It could be an article read online. Very similar thing. Uh, the author. Uh, I'm sorry, the name of the person involved, the uh, name of the book, uh, publishing date, and the page number where this information was found. Now we get a little bit more complicated. 
when you say, well, I found this information on a website. In this case, it might be myheritage.com or it might be somebody's personal website. It could be some other genealogy website, but somebody uh, uploaded the information. But again, same kind of information. I do not record, uh, normally do not record uh, the location of the website because I find it changes so often. And I'm sure it will change sometime in the next 100 years. So one of my descendants is looking for it 100 years from now. That probably would not do them much good. But thanks to search engines such as uh, Google or some of those, uh, you can just type that information and you can probably find it rather quickly, even if it has moved. Digital images. Um, this is a proper source citation, like those images I showed you of my grandmother at different ages. Again, the same idea. This came from a microfilm at the archives of Ontario. And so I'm going to say that a combination of these photos plus the text information you were just looking at together makes a very good source citation. I would tend to think that the photograph by itself is not that good. However, uh, on MyHeritage and in most other computer programs and most other genealogy websites, the source citation, the text of it is stored right somewhere near the photograph. You may have to click on the photograph or click on something else in order to see it, but it's usually there. Uh, in the process of making this presentation, I couldn't find them side by side on uh, MyHeritage. Uh, I actually had to click on each photograph, and then I could see the text with it. Here's some other examples. I'm just going to run through these rather quickly. This is information that came out of uh, a book. And you see on the right, younger siblings, and there's the, the younger family members. Here are some documents and pictures of things that most all genealogists are very familiar with. You've got uh, some records of... Ludwig uh, John Vanny, I think it is, Company 29, uh, something volunteer, 1863. I'm going to guess that probably was the U.S. Civil War. He had photographs. You got a letter up above. Uh, things of that sort. These are all items that should be documented as to where you found them and some descriptions so that people can find it in the future. Different example. This came out of a book, but whoever wrote the book not only had photographs, he had a photocopy of a census record right next to it. And right below it, he had an excellent source citation. 1911 census for Guelph shows Joseph, age 33, a foreman, et cetera, et cetera. You can read that. Uh, I think that is perhaps the very best source citation of all. You got a photograph of the individual. You got a, a photograph of the original uh, census record. And then right below it, you've got a text that uh, gives an excellent source citation. Marriage records, I don't think you have to uh, I have to say much. This absolutely should be recorded as a source citation. It is one of my favorites. Uh, this is a ship's passenger list, and I only got the uh, top part of it. But if uh, that happened to be your uh, ancestor there on the very first line, you'd find out a lot about him. And he probably made a lot of he probably made a lot of trips back and forth on that ship because it gives his occupation as steward. I'm guessing he's part of the ship's uh, crew. Uh, certificate of citizenship. Those of us in North America, U.S. or Canada, often have these. This has to be uh, a source citation. It has to be assigned to this, in my opinion. Okay, that is essentially what we're talking about. But for more information, I'm going to point out a couple of really excellent uh, books. Uh, these are both by Elizabeth Schoen Mills, who is one of the best-known authorities on source citations. And as you can see, there's two titles over on the left. One is Evidence, Citation, and Analysis for the Family Historian. And then below it is Evidence Explained, Citing History Sources from Artifacts to Cyberspace. Uh, that second book, Citing History Sources from Artifacts of Cyberspace, is just about source citations, and it's excellent. It's, it's a little bit dry, as you'd expect it. It's, it's more in a form of uh, an encyclopedia. But it uh, tells, it gives, I believe, over 100 examples, 100 different 
uh, source citations for different media. When it's, and when she wrote from artifacts to cyberspace, she was correct. She showed uh, all sorts of ways to uh, give source citations for web pages, for email messages you may have received, and so on. The first book, Evidence, Citation, and Analysis, is a little bit more of an English language. Uh, that's probably the wrong choice of words. I mean, they're both in English, but it's a how-to book. And she gives detailed analysis of how to take a source citation and uh, not only how to write it, but how to see somebody else's source citation and go back and uh, find it later and what it can mean to you. This one's kind of uh, interesting in a way. This is a uh, what's called a quick sheet. It's also by Elizabeth Schoen Mills. And it's actually four pages and it's in plastic. And I looked all over the uh, internet trying to find a picture of the whole thing. And it appears that uh, the person who made the photo deliberately uh, fuzzied up uh, all the text on here. Keep in mind for a document that's only four pages long, they didn't want to give away an entire one-fourth of it by having you read the words right off the uh, internet. So they deliberately made it fuzzy, but the, you notice they left the uh, titles uh, more or less readable. The advantage on this is that it's uh, much cheaper. It is a shortcut. It is literally a quick sheet. This runs around out. Uh, Ten or twelve dollars, maybe maybe fifteen dollars. The two books that I showed you earlier both are quite expensive. They're both quite thick, uh, as you would expect uh, an encyclopedia to be. But uh, they run in the neighborhood of fifty or sixty dollars each. Uh, the prices are going to vary a little bit depending upon where you got it. All of these are published by what you see down in the lower right corner, pub genealogical publishing company. Uh, I didn't give a source citation as to where you can find genealogical publishing company. But I suspect if you have a computer and you have a search engine, you can find it in about 15 or 20 seconds. So again, here's the quick sheet, much cheaper and a very handy little device. So whatever you do, make backups. You don't want to spend all your time on a computer and write hundreds and hundreds of hours of research time, source citation, and then have a hard drive crash. And trust me, you would not be the first person to have that problem. It's happened often. However, making backups, one of my favorite topics, but I'm gonna save that for another conversation for another day if uh, Esther ever uh, invites me back. So that is essentially what I uh, my presentation for today. Uh, I will entertain uh, questions from the audience. Uh, I probably should get out of here somewhere around midnight local time. That's, that gives me about eight hours of questions if you, uh, any of you can stick around that long. But uh, Esther, if I could turn it back to you, probably with a screen, and uh, <laughs> take any uh, questions that we can uh, possibly help anybody with. Sure, great. I think we'll do a little bit less than eight hours of questions. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Um, and of course, we definitely would like you back. That's that's always, always. So uh, we'll have to schedule something else about backups. Definitely also a very, very important, important topic. So um, we do have a few questions. Before we get to the questions, I just want to say we've already received some fantastic, fantastic entries for today's little draw that we are gonna be having after the questions. Anyone who still wants to send in a photo of themselves enjoying today's live session, um, was just so nice to see these photos. Uh, we just asked everyone watching to kind of take a photo of them watching today's session and to send it to the email address stories at myheritage.com. So if there's any extra, if there's any other entries, uh, last minute ones that you haven't sent in yet, please, please do. We received some really nice ones. Uh, it was kind of funny to see a few of, of myself on the screen and <laughs> in the photos, um, but it's so nice to see how you're all enjoying these live sessions. Um, we really, really appreciate it because uh, we know how how important they are, this uh, family history information and uh, learning about different topics is just uh, so, so useful for, for so many of our viewers. So, uh, so we love seeing that. Um, thank you for everyone who already sent in a photo. So nice to see. So a few comments that we received, um, Dick, and then we'll go to questions. Um, let's uh, Lori says, including sources in my genealogy has given my research credibility. 
direct or collateral relations can refer back to the source to see where I found the information. So true, and that's that's really the basis of, of, of the importance uh, yeah, I, I'm going to add in there. Congratulations. I'm, I'm delighted to hear that. And I'm sure you know that it's uh, been a great asset in, in your own research. So uh, I just want to give you kudos for, for doing it. Uh, I hope you did that very early in your genealogy quest. And uh, let's see, we also, so um, Mary also had a comment. She said, great um, when you knew the family and you can tie it into your tree, uh, you can tie in your tree to what was told to you. Unfortunately, not everything was passed on. Sometimes I feel like I am plowing. Hmm. Yeah, I've got a few examples of that within my own family tree. Uh, I've got one, uh, I'm trying to think of a polite way to say this. I have a case of uh, an aunt. Luckily, all, all the people involved are now deceased, so I can probably talk about them, but I'll, I'll leave their names out anyway. Uh, but I believe that there's a, a child born out of wedlock who was then adopted informally. I don't think there was any paperwork or any court order. I believe it was actually taken under the care of another relative's and was raised as the other relative's child. And I can't prove it. I have suspicions. There's some age differences. Uh, the relatives who informally adopted the child were a little bit old to be having children at that time, but not so old as to be impossible. Uh, I wrote that down in a little private thing because not everybody knows about that. And I, and I don't know it. It's just uh what i believe is probably true uh i don't want to give that out as a source citation uh in my own notes luckily i can have a little confidential things that only i will see and i can put something in there that says uh there's a possibility that maybe so and so was the child of so and so uh that's the way i do it i do not consider that to be a true source citation because it is not proof of a fact it's uh it is proof of a suspicion, not a fact. And for me, source citations should always refer to, to facts. I suspect other people have other ways of doing it. I won't say they're wrong, but they definitely do it differently than I do. If only we could go back and ask uh, our ancestors uh, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we have a question here from Rose, and Rose asks, can you share how to document church records that are done by parish? Do we use page numbers and the parish names, or what do we do for the parish? Uh, that's an excellent question, and the quick answer is it's going to vary. Uh, my favorite answer is it all depends. Uh, but yes, you're absolutely right. It's, your intent is correct. Uh, and if you're looking at the original record of a parish, uh, yes, definitely uh, the page number was on. The, and when I say original record, that might be a, a piece of paper that you found in a filing cabinet at the, the parish office, or you might be looking at a book of transcribed records, or you might be looking at a microfilm that was taken from the book, or you might be looking online at an image that was taken from the microfilm, which in turn was taken from the book. So I won't automatically say that you have to have the page numbers because Page numbers don't transfer to microfilm very well, and they typically don't uh, transfer to digitized computer images. However, if you looked at the original book or if you looked at original records in the parish office, yes, absolutely add that. And my mind is that you should be uh, in recording all the information that is relevant to the copy that you found. And if you found it in a book, say that, if you, uh, even to the page number. If you found it in uh, the parish office in a filing cabinet, say that. If you found it uh, online on www.myheritage.com, say that. Whatever information you have is what you should be recording. We have a comment here from Lori, and she said, unfortunately, I did not cite sources early on. They are much easier to find now with a myriad of online sources. Now I can find online the information that took me months of viewing microfilms. So definitely, definitely something a little bit easier nowadays. <laughs> oh, that is, well, yes and no. 
Uh, it's easy to do it. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, however, there's so much digitized available online that I'm going through more records per day or per week or per year. Uh, back in the good old days, uh, my way of looking at a birth record was jump in the automobile and drive over to the town where the birth occurred and look at it there. And even after I learned how to make source citations, that was one source citation. And then I got in the car and drove back home. Uh, nowadays, I can be hitting 10, 20, 50, uh, some number of source citations per day. And now I find I'm spending more time both in the uh, documenting new records that I found. Well, I don't find that many new ones nowadays, but I used to. And uh, also uh, trying to catch up on all the ones I didn't do the first few years that I was involved in this uh, pursuit. Wow. Um, we have a question here from, let's see, we have one here from Connie. She asks, when one confirms a smart match and adds to their own tree, is the other tree source? I believe it's optional. Uh, I would say you need to make a determination whether or not you want to keep that original source citation or if you want to modify it a bit. If it was me, I'd probably mostly keep the, uh, the citation as recorded by the other person, but I might add a few words uh, to it that says, as imported from uh, this other family tree online, and I give the details of that one. By the way, the, the books I showed you at the end by Elizabeth Schoen Mills, uh, they are excellent books, and I do try to stick with them, but I do not hesitate to embellish and add even more than what she recommends. I try to always make sure I put in whatever she recommends, and then I might add even more. And you can even tell Elizabeth uh, that I said so. <laughs> but don't ever tell her that I don't do it. Yeah, I do. I try very hard to, to follow exactly what she recommends. Okay, um, we'll take one last question before we announce today's winner. Um, I know we said today's session isn't about this, um, but Teresa asked, and, and maybe we'll do a, a further, another session, but uh, Teresa asks, do you have a link on how to send your backup to the cloud? Oh, yes, I absolutely do. I could, one of my favorite topics, but I could not possibly answer that in the next two or three minutes. That'll be my next one hour presentation I make next time. <laughs> uh, if you drop me an email, I can give you a brief overview uh, in email, maybe two or three paragraphs and give you a little reference for more reading. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'd, I would like to save that for another time, another event, if you don't mind. So that was the final question. And all of a sudden, I've got total silence on my end. Uh, Esther, are you still there, or did we lose you? Or did you lose me? And the answer is, I don't know. I am going to make a uh, suggestion that maybe, I don't know if, if I got disconnected or if Esther got disconnected. But either way, I'm going to say thank you very much for everything. And I'm going to go away. Sorry uh, about that. It looks like I lost power for a minute. Um, wow. I lost well, power in my house. And, and all of a sudden, I lost, you know, that's what happens when it's stormy weather outside. <laughs> so well, sorry. Well, uh, yeah, it's your fault. I, I'll blame you forever for the for losing power and and for the storm. Sure, I will, but that's okay. I uh, was just wrapping up anyway. Uh, okay, and, so uh, I think it's, uh, I'll turn it back over to you and let you uh, finish. Um, can, is everyone with me? Can you can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. I don't know if anybody else can. Okay, okay, fantastic. Sorry about that. Uh, power went out, um, obviously at the worst time. <laughs> uh, 
of course. Um, so we just want to announce today's winner. Uh, we, we received some fantastic entries. Love seeing you all uh, watching today's session. So thank you everybody who gave in a photo. Um, and today's winner is Hugh Williams. And I'm going to just uh, uh, show a picture of Hugh. I don't know if you can see. Uh, um, sitting there watching today's session with a thumbs up. <laughs> so congratulations, Hugh. And we'll be in touch with you uh, through private message or through email to claim your prize. And thank you everyone who entered today's contest. Dick, thank you so much for joining us. Very, oh, very informative. And, and I see so many people who said, um, now they know what they're gonna be doing this winter. <laughs> yeah. Your homework assignment is, Yes. So now they have uh, now they now they have the instructions and they know exactly exactly what they what they have to get started on and and I think the important thing is that it's never too late even if it's something that you haven't been doing until now uh, now is the great time to start uh, you know never too late take advantage of of maybe some more time at home this winter and uh, and hopefully you can get to work 